joining us now is General Lord Richard Dannett, former head of the British Army, of course. Um, thank you for joining us, my Lord, this morning. Just hearing as I'm talking to you that Norway's Defence Minister saying they're sending more troops as well to bolster NATO. Um, how likely do you think it is, as of this morning, that some kind of war is likely? Well, good morning, Katie. Um, as Alistair Bunkle has just reported, um, the preparations by the Russians and the signs are all there that uh, they could mount an attack, uh, one of a series of potential attack um, objectives, um, at any time. And I'm sure that uh, intelligence is absolutely right to come to that conclusion. But, and here's the critical but, they may well have the capability in place. Uh, have they got the intention? Has Vladimir Putin decided that's what he wants to do? And I think that is, that is the big but. As things currently stand, he's captured the attention of all Western leaders. Uh, we can all see he's got uh, significant military forces on the Ukrainian border. He's there threatening, he's intimidating, he's bullying. He's achieved an awful lot of what he wants to achieve. He's got the world talking about Vladimir Putin. But if he attacks that lightning strike from Belarus to Kiev or moving into the Donetsk area, which is also quite, quite possible, it will involve huge destruction of Ukrainian infrastructure. It'll involve large numbers of loss of life of Ukrainian soldiers and civilians. And critically, it will also involve the loss of life of, of many Russian soldiers. And, and he'll be doing something, frankly, that's out of date. Um, the mid 20th century, we saw Hitler invade parts of Europe. It used to happen in the 18th and 19th centuries and before that. Is this really something that a responsible leader in the 21st century actually really wants to do? From being in the strong position that he is now, he'd be the object of opprobrium and criticism and vilification right across the world. Does he really want that? I've stick my neck out, I've stuck it out before. I don't think he does. I don't think he will make a major kind of incursion. At the very least, I think what he might do uh, is move into the Donbass, Donetsk area, which has been under dispute for quite some time since 2014. And this would pose a bit of a dilemma for, for Western leaders. Will he make the major incursion? No, I don't think he will. He's achieved a lot of what he wants to achieve already. And of course, that comes back to Ukraine not joining NATO. And again, I'll stick my neck out and say, as much as we admire the Ukrainians, I don't believe they should be part of NATO because spiritually and emotionally, they're too close to Russia. And I think it's a provocation of the Russians too far. If we do look at a, an incursion to the east, to the maybe south east, if I'm right in saying, um, in Donetsk, um, as opposed to right up in the far north of uh, the country and, and the capital, even well, apparently it's only about 120 miles or so from the border, even if the Russian troops do come in and travel all the way to Kiev, what do they do then? Well, you've made a very good point. You asked a very good question, Kay, as always. Um, well, what do they do on the way? The answer is they will be fought aggressively by the Ukrainian armed forces. They are over 200,000 strong, plus their own militia. Their capability is much greater now than it was 5, 10, 15 years before. It will not be a pushover for, for Russian troops. Um, OK, let's assume that they fight their way sooner or later to Kiev. They fight their way up through the east or the southeast and, if you like, occupy most of the country. Uh, what is going to happen then? Are the Ukrainians going to accept that? I, I don't think they will. I think unless the Russians decide to withdraw very quickly, they'll find that they've got an insurgency on their hands that you could argue might make Afghanistan like a walk in the park. I think the Ukrainians would not accept Russian troops on every street corner, Russian troops dominating and Russia dominating Ukraine. Ukraine is a fiercely independent country. It wants to be separate from Russia. Uh, and we have every responsibility to support their right to be independent in the same way that Sweden and Finland are, um, to support their independence and support them in their fight to maintain their own territorial sovereignty and integrity. Um, interestingly, I spoke to um, a vice chair of the Duma, now a historian, Russian, um, just yesterday on the programme, and she was saying, I was asking her about why the troops were on the border, and she was saying that they are there to um, protect Russia from an invasion from Ukraine. How would you have reacted if she'd said that to you? Well, um, yes, OK. Uh, right through the period of the Cold War, the 
the line that the Soviet Union always took was that they had to have large armed forces, even to the point of crippling their own, their own economy, because they wanted to defend themselves against NATO aggression. So this is the same line, that the Russians are there to protect themselves against Ukrainian aggression. But I'm afraid, just, just take a sort of pinch of reality, NATO never had any intention of being aggressive towards the Soviet Union up till 1989, and Ukraine has no intention of being aggressive towards Russia. So I'm afraid, with all due respect to that um, correspondent and commentator you were talking to yesterday, um, Cloud Cuckoo Land is somewhere that sensible people don't inha inhabit, and I think she might have just bought a ticket there. <laughs> um... I wonder what you think about the chair of the uh, Defence Select Committee, Tobias Elwood, a former military man as well, of course. He says that NATO troops should be on the ground right now in Ukraine and that Putin is smelling weakness and exploiting it. What would happen if NATO troops uh, found themselves on the ground in Ukraine? OK, um, I, I, I shouldn't smile. Um, you're not the first person to ask me um, about Tobias Elwood. I, actually, I rang Tobias about 20 minutes ago and said, come on, chap, what, what are you getting on about? Um, I know Tobias very well. He was under my command in Bosnia in the mid-90s when we were ending, ending that war. The point that Tobias was making, and it was a fair point uh, when he was making it, was that perhaps, and I don't agree, but perhaps what the West should have done six, 12 months ago is realise the threat that Russia was to Ukraine. And at that point, not just put training forces in uh, and supplied them with weaponry and so on, that there was probably a case for a demonstrative deterrent deployment of NATO forces in Ukraine to up the stakes, if you like, and persuade um, uh, Vladimir Putin that this would be a very dangerous course to follow. That, that's really what Tobias was getting on about when he said that there should be, have been a small number of British troops uh, deployed there. It was a kind of tripwire uh, and also to up the stakes for Vladimir Putin. Um, what Tobias is saying now, and he said to me earlier this morning, is of course now we shouldn't be doing that, but it was something that perhaps we should have thought about six, 12 months ago. Well, on that basis, it was a fair point. But the underlying point is that Ukraine is not a member of NATO, I believe should not be a member of NATO. I believe that that would be a provocation to the Russians greater than is reasonable, uh, given the historic link between Ukraine and Russia. And it brings us back to the point, we absolutely support Ukraine's right to be independent uh, and to fight if they wish to do so, and I'm sure they will, to defend their own territory and their own sovereignty. Uh, my Lord, it's always great to talk to you and it was fabulous to have your son on the programme um, at the end of last week. Thank Do you. thank him uh, on our behalf for taking the time to join us. Thank you. I will, Kay. Thanks. All the best. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.